welcome back in this and next few lectures we will discuss aspects of electro deposition the system we are looking at is there are some metal salts in the electrolyte and these metal salts are deposited at the cathode to make this deposition possible, uh, we have a reductive potential at the cathode. So this reduces the metal salt. That is, it supplies electrons to the metal salt. And the metal is deposited in the elemental form at the cathode. So this field goes by many names. The traditional name for this is industrial metal finishing or electroplating. Uh, this has very important technological consequence and it's been practiced over uh, many decades. It's widely pra uh, practiced, industrial pra industrially practiced, um, but it also has a lot of new applications, very modern application. It, this Aspects of electrodeposition is involved in nanoscale deposition of nanoscale interconnect um, in the context of computer hardware. A lot of modern techniques have also been developed uh, for depositing semiconductors too. So this is the the modeling of this is fairly intricate. We will not be able to describe all aspects of this process. Um, however, we will look at some of the aspects so that you get a broad overview of what this process entails. There is a related process called electroless deposition. This is the way of depositing uh, materials, metals especially, on substrates that are not conducting in nature. All these in these techniques, uh, the substrate on which the metal uh, is deposited or semiconductor is deposited is electronically conducting. But there are cases, for example, when you develop a printed circuit uh, board, you deposit copper um, and the substrate is not electronically conducting. Okay, so it can be plastic substrate and so on. So in this case, Typically, there's a chemical reduction um, from a salt, um, wherein a thin layer of metal is deposited. That is done by chemical uh, reduction. And following that, you can um, use uh, electroplating. We will not be looking at electroless deposition in this series of lecture. Perhaps we can look at it um, in a different set of lectures. So the setup is something like this. A very basic setup is shown here. So what do we have? So this is the same setup for electroplating of uh, a copper on the cathode, or it can also be used for electro refining uh, copper. So what we have here is a source of copper at the anode. This copper can be um, pure uh, copper or in there's another context where impure copper is at the anode. In either of the cases, what we have is copper from the anode, um, which can be pure or impure, is brought to the solution uh, at, um, uh, because this electrode is used as an anode. Okay? So by application of a suitable potential, uh, the copper from the anode is uh, oxidized and brought into the electrolyte. So copper ions in the electrolyte, uh, because of the cathodic potential at this electrode, uh, the electrons are combined with this uh, uh, these ions on in the uh, electrolyte, and you deposit copper at the cathode. So this metal can is different from copper. So overall, what is occurring here is copper from the anode is deposited uh, at the cathode. 
so we would um, this this is fairly a descriptive um, presentation, uh, but we will look at it more quantitatively in the next few lectures. So there are different kinds of anodes that are used in electrodeposition. So the anode which I describe here is a consumable or a soluble anode. Okay? So that can be the source of the material that you are electrodepositing. So uh, the, one of the disadvantage of such an anode is that the impurities from the consumable anode may also get into the electrolyte and may perhaps be deposited at the cathode. Okay? So there are some advantages and disadvantages for uh, in using consumable or a soluble anode. Um, sometimes you can also use an inert uh, anode for uh, electrodeposition. In this case, the typical electrochemical reaction that is occurring at the anode is oxygen evolution. So the elementary quantification of this process goes via Faraday's law. So Q is the amount of charge that is passed. Q by NF gives you the amount of moles of um, material that has been deposited. Capital M sub I is the molecular weight. So this gives you the total amount of mass that has been electrodeposited. So the amount of charge can be obtained from current. Uh, this is uh, efficiency of uh, um, of deposition. Uh, so this is fairly elementary application of Faraday's law. So from all these things, if you know the density of uh, the de material that is being deposited, this is the area involved, you can get to the thickness of the uh, electrodeposit. So these are all fairly routine application of uh, Faraday's law. So in the next lecture, what we would look at is there are aspects of defects on the substrate. Okay, So there can be kink sites, step sites, and vacancy sites on the surface. This have a big influence on the microstructure that is obtained via electrodeposition. This is what we will look at in the next lecture. Thank you.